Good evening. You look thirsty today. Maybe you want to take a sip? It's on the house. I really enjoy your enthusiasm and I'm glad that you came here. Of course you know who I am. It is I, Orkar Isper, your guide in the Sanguine Archives, where we explore the lore of the world of darkness. From a perspective of and a focus on Canites, in special Clan Valley. So let me guide you tonight through the labyrinth and see what we can uncover in the memories of the blood. In tonight's venture, a well before time, we will explore the origins of Clan Bali that are shrouded in mystery like no one else is. Indeed, it all dates back so far ago, so long ago, that barely anyone even remembers when, where or how it happened. The origins of the Clan Bali are nebulous, mysterious. We kind of don't even know when and where it actually happened, or who embraced them. And indeed, we don't know when and where at all. But let me explain. Because there are more and less disputed and contradicted depictions of those events. It's usually said that a cult of infernalists dwelt in a city in the time after the flood. Maybe it was Mashkan Shapir, a Khorasan, or a city named Ashur, we don't know. There are, however, tales that put Cain as the first infernalist, according to the fragments of the Book of Nod that we uncovered, where they said that he actually called out to demons in order to learn how to embrace. And given that Lilith is often depicted as not only Cain's teacher, but also the first infernalist magi, one that is in league with the demons. It's not too far to think that many of the more obscure and esoteric disciplines that Cain learned actually came from demons as well. And as we know, they don't do things for free. Some say that the Bali may actually have spawned in the first city, predating the flood. Indeed, some sources place the Bali for wars at least the first Bali war in the time of the first city and blame the Bali for its downfall and the uprising of the third generation against the second. The original tale that was the first told was later taken back, but it said that Ashur, the Cappadocian antediluvian, spawned 13 childer, 12 of which would become the first Bali and only Enoya resisting corruption, creating the Gangrel bloodline. The most common variant though is cross-referenced in many many books and puts the Bali founders Nurgal, Moloch and the Unnamed as fourth generation vampires created by a third generation founder which most widely accepted is Sawlot, the Salubri founder. He is also spoken of in the lore of the East. However, the founder of the Bali could be Ashur, the Cappadocian clan founder, as the actual clan founder of the Bali is often referred by others and themselves many many times as Ashur. But it could as well just be the name of the city where it all happened. Indeed, there are even more possible progenitors of the bloodline. Some say the Tsimitsi Antediluvian, the eldest, spawned the Bali, similar to how he was created by trying to cast out his own evil on dead bodies, which kinda didn't work the first time and it definitely created something even worse the second time around. Arikel, the Toriador Antediluvian, is also supposed to have spawned the Bali, as is Hakim, the Asamite, Antediluvian, given with the tale of Urshulgi, who is also sometimes said to be one of the original founders of Clan Bali, which isn't too far-fetched given his powers and how he came about. All of these are possible, but only Saulot and the Tsimitsi explain certain oddities, like the Bali blood being almost indistinguishable from Tremir blood. 
Indeed, you need a very high auspex and thaumaturgy skill to even note this, that a Balish blood is actually not of Tremere blood. But the difference is so subtle it can easily be explained away by magic rituals and accidents. Indeed, if you do just a lower skilled test of barley blood, it, you will find definitely that it is just Tremere blood. There's also a rumor that the La Sombra and the Deluvian may have spawned the barley, linking their interest in demons and the abyss to the La Sombra blood. However, from all mentioned sources, this is the least likely version, as the La Sombra clan founder apparently wasn't even near the region where it supposedly happened. The founding of the Bali, that is, in ancient Mesopotamia, or even in the first city, while the La Sombra Antediluvian was on travels. There is also a version where the Bali didn't spawn by vampire blood at all, and are indeed not even Cainites, but cursed themselves supernaturally with the depravity of infernalism and the well as it is mentioned in the secrets of the true Black Hand. However, none of these explains some generation oddities among the Bali. Because there are Bali that are second, second generation vampires, including Asanial, Lilith and the Crone. Even Scylla is rumored to actually be the unnamed Bali founder and hence another second generation Bali. Now Asanial is, as said before, a weird figure and may have diablerized a second generation vampire, maybe even Scylla, or altered the blood supernaturally when he opened the doors of Corazon. However, Lilith, Scylla and indeed the Crone are definitely Cain's childer, and one of them is said to be the third Bali founder, which means that technically all three official founders, including Nurgle and Moloch, should be, or at least could be, second generation vampires, which would explain why, in special Nurgle, is so amazingly overpowered that he, all by himself, might I add, can withstand the wrath of 13 entire clans combined. I mean, sure, he was finally defeated but not destroyed, despite being washed away by shadows into the abyss itself, from which he later emerged again. And I mentioned that he fought multiple third generation antediluvian vampires at the same time and lived. And I have problems believing that a fourth generation vampire can do that. Indeed, Asanial, Scylla, the Crone and Lilith all predate not only the Flood, but even the First City, at least as mortals. The Crone and Lilith couldn't have been embraced prior to the First City, as Cain didn't even know how to before he actually sold some parts of his remains of his souls to the demons. There is also a version where actually there were 13 founders of the Bali, all ancient vampires from 4th to 2nd generation, infernalists all, that were the original coven and made a pact with hell to create a clan for the demons in exchange for the darkest secrets and powers. A similar tale tells us that indeed Nurgle and Moloch are of the tribe of the first men, predating Cain, Adam and Eve, both already having been embraced before Cain was even cursed and used the apostate ritual to re-embrace themselves into the Bali. Now for those less familiar with ancient lore, I might have to explain that the tribe of the first men is a mythical legend that there were people before Adam and Eve that God created man before Adam was around, but kind of went back to the drawing board and recreated man, reimagined man. Less powerful, as it is said, that the tribe of the first men didn't die of age. They didn't die to illness. Indeed, they were pretty much superior to the men that came later. And if Nurgle and Moloch are of that tribe, it could very well explain how the apostate ritual actually works, because the re-embrace changes your blood, and the blood of the first men definitely would be powerful and potent enough to achieve that. According to the Salubri, Solot embraced the slave boy, who then became one of the four 
if not free, barley progenitors. Which is also what the barley themselves claim, by the way. And we are not sure if there were actually four or three progenitors. As I said, very little is actually known. My personal preferred version, however, is that after Solot and the others destroyed the city in the first city timeline, that was full of infernalists and tossed all of the corpses into the well. After they left, Cain approached and embraced the dying survivors by shedding his blood into the well, drop by drop, in order to fulfill his revenge against God and the heavens, using the barley to do just that. Keep in mind, Cain learned how to embrace from demons and possibly some of his more esoteric disciplines as well, making Cain an infernalist, if not the first infernalist. And given both Lilith and the Crone have connections to demons, it's not hard to imagine that they actually led an infernalist cult that would become the Bali. I speculate that Cain actually met Lucifer when both of them roamed the earth, as Lucifer was never imprisoned in the abyss, never thrown into hell. So I can see those two meeting and exchanging some knowledge, as Lucifer was always a fan of Cain's uprising and of mankind's divinity, helping Cain to restore or even gain powers that fit the man that Lucifer and his angels created. With Nurgle, Moloch, Asaniel and Lilith freshly embraced by Cain, they converted Scylla and the Crone, still in Torpor, to their cause and thus were born the original Bali. I like to think that the slave boy and Shaitan also were among the cultists and thus original Bali. We might never know what is actually true or, or what really happened, but we do know that the Bali are a force to be reckoned with. They survived two gigantic wars against all other clans, faced prosecution from all of them and are still around, so they kind of know what they do. To end this, I have to say that there is so much contradiction going on in how they were created, who created the Bali and what actually went down, that you can pick pretty much any version you like though I think that some are way more plausible than others. With that said, I want to come to an end of today's journey into the labyrinth. And let's leave the Sanguine Archives just for now. I hope you enjoyed our trip and learned something. If you want to help me out, please like, subscribe and most importantly share with your friends and tell them about the Sanguine Archives. I would appreciate it. Thank you and good night.